other kitties, I'm Karine, the vacuum tube witch. And it's project building time again. You certainly recognize this. It's the original box from a Commodore 64 power supply. The later version. I had so much um, work uh, getting the guts out of this because I'll be building a new one with uh, a uh, more reliable uh, power supply with a um, more reliable um, voltage regulator <coughs> using the teeny tiny switch mode power supply uh, switch mode uh, voltage converter from uh, Recom instead of the original linear voltage regulator and unfortunately, in the process of uh, removing the guts from the enclosure, and the original um, transformer got damaged and I have to replace it with um, a new transformer. And the first part of this project uh, will be putting the, um, the transformer in silicone uh, in the box and when the silicone is curing I will um, start doing the the circuit board if I can also draw the schematic for you if I don't have it drawn already <laughs> so without further ado let's get over to the bench So we've got this pesky little bugger. Maybe we should zoom on in. Oh, what's happening? I got this OBS controller, but heh, guess it didn't uh, survive the restart of OBS. <laughs> Let's try again to see if it was not a... Clumsy me. Advertisements. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, let's zoom on in. Gotcha. So this is the enclosure from the Commodore 64 with an additional LED. Uh, I had to make a hole to be able to remove the inerts. Uh, so I might as well add a uh, pilot light. And this is how it looks like. the anode and the cathode. What I also have here is a teeny tiny bit bigger uh, transformer from some uh, audio device with uh, windings customized. Both the black and the red winding on are 9 volts like the original. Got this little assembly reminding a teeny tiny bit of an uh, ATAT. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do, uh, this is a uh, mechanical replacement for a um, printed circuit board or a perf board. Uh, because I'm gonna use a uh, perf board uh, in this project. And it sits uh, atop of the transformer using those uh, supports. This will be all 
filled with silicone in such a way that um, the board itself uh, is not covered. It can be removed for servicing. Now I'm gonna put this <coughs> whole little assembly into the enclosure. But uh, this is only to show you how it's going to look like uh, when I put it uh, together. But first I would like to add some silicone. Get this CX80 construction silicone. I don't have... Uh, the tool used for pushing the, the thing out of uh, the tube. I think I don't need that nozzle right now. We'll cut off the tip. The silicone is clear. I've got this makeshift way of doing things with a uh, <laughs> with a big and heavy wrench that I can use for pushing the silicone <coughs> out of the tube. I guess that will be enough of this. And it's pretty stinky, so I will use a uh, fume exhaust. <coughs> I need to spread the silicone over the whole uh, enclosure. So, some piece of paper might come in handy. And while we're, we're at the paper, this is the schematic for the device. On the input side, we've got a fuse and the main transformer. And this is the full bridge rectifier, of course, the filter cap. And here we've got uh, the interesting part. The voltage regulator was made by Recon, a company that I know uh, from uh, the time when uh, I worked uh, for uh, Enelion. This is the pesky little bugger. It can uh, regulate uh, up to 2 amps uh, on 5 volts. Isn't it impressive? Just a teeny tiny bit bigger than the 7805 or LM317. Look at that! Beautiful! And I will add a um, backwards polarized uh, 1N4007 uh, to protect uh, the Recom regulator from uh, getting the same uh, ugly kind of damage that uh, the original Commodore 64 power supply was sus susceptible to. Like, uh, if, uh, if you got the output voltage uh, higher than the input voltage on the original voltage regulator, it tended to <laughs> fail catastrophically for the computer because uh, it sent 12 volts on the 5 volt uh, DC supply of uh, the Commodore. It was a Commodore killer. And I don't want any of my power supplies to be Commodore killers, so that's why I'm doing this project.
I guess I can use uh, some alt and uh, no longer need that thinkpad part that was just in the box next to my working area. Spreading this like thermal paste on a CPU. I clearly <laughs> need more of this stuff. Then it will be m a matter of pressing the transformer into this. Both the transformer and and the board have to go in. Of course, I have to observe the the sides. Uh, on this side, we've got the secondary winding, and on this side, we've got the primary winding. This shall be lowered into the enclosure. By applying some pressure, we can see the level of the silicone rising. There's a high chance of, of uh, failure on this project. If you don't do anything, you can't fail. I guess that's enough silicone. If I only had a hydraulic press, but I don't. So that would be for potting the transformer. And I 
I guess I should let it cure for at least a few hours. Maybe a few days. So I will make this a uh, two-part uh, mini-series on um, building the Commodore power supply. Just had to clean my tools. I guess that's enough silicone for this. So, I can start building the circuit. I will do it on the perf board. And it's pretty simple. I might um, the larger holes uh, for the fuse holder. And here we've got the terminal block. Of course I will do all those connections with some wire. the secondary side again a uh, terminal block those connections will be used um, as a straight through connection um, to the to the 9 volt AC winding five of them uh, two of them will be in the AC one will be the ground, uh, one will be plus 9 volts, and one will be the LED. And of course, the full bridge rectifier! I will leave a considerable distance from the primary and the secondary. Like two centimeters between the sides, it should be enough. I have to make the main filter cap horizontal. This is uh, where the Wacom will come. 
Maybe I'll move the full bridge rectifier a teeny tiny bit to the left. Placing the recon next to the full bridge rectifier so that uh, next to the filter cap, of course, so that I can attach them with a uh, piece of wire. This is gonna be a little bit boring, so I will just do it off the camera. And we'll get back to this uh, in the next episode. And then the silicone should have cured already. So it will be time to put it back together and test the voltages and attach the cables. Got the original cables, of course. 
This is the AC plus DC. AC is on the black wires. DC is on the brown and blue. This is um, the main cable. And they will come back into this enclosure because um, that's uh, what I uh, intended uh, this project to be like. Uh, recreating the original look and feel of uh, the Commodore power supply while having a reliable unit. So, let's end this one here. So, that's this project, ending with a little cliffhanger, a little technological cliffhanger. See you in the next episode, we'll make this power supply work. And I have to tell you one thing, Fran is reissuing one of her old uh, t-shirts the black one with some uh, Commodore basic code that uh, makes the white letters on the black screen <laughs> I will get one it should be here in April I'm wondering what happens first if I'm gonna have uh, 1000 subscribers on my channel or if I'm gonna get that tea or if I'm gonna have uh, my 38th birthday on uh, 2nd of April. We'll see. And for now, stay determined and carry on. As always. <laughs>